is sanctification for everybody. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net, Rocks of Revelation being poured out to you. It is a beautiful day in Gautier, Mississippi. I just went on my boxer prayer walk. The birds were chirping. The sun was up. It's nice and cool, like 70 degrees. I heard a woodpecker. I mean, it's just, I wanted to paint that picture for you. You know, we need to thank God for being alive. Thank God for the things that we have. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise. You know, there's something about drawing closer to God. When I start thanking him for the woodpecker in my neighborhood, and I start praising His holy name for creating a woodpecker that I could enjoy. I find that I want to draw closer to the Lord. And one of the things about drawing closer to the Lord, and I don't have all the scriptures in front of me at this moment, but when you read the letters to the churches, Jesus talks about to those that overcome, to those that overcome, to those that overcome, I'll give a new name. He can sit with me in my throne. And I'm like going, hmm, there's something about Jesus in overcoming. There's something about that. And then, and then he also says, outside the New Jerusalem, you know, without or sorcerers. Well, I'm going to back up a little bit. You know, in, in Revelation 22, let's say 12, and behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Now, this is the book of Revelation, post cross, New Testament dispensation. Blessed are they which do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Okay, so do in the commandments, you get the right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Then in verse 15, it says, For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So in the letters to the churches, you know, I I was talking about if you read each church, we've got to overcome something. And every time we overcome something, you know, there's we get closer to Jesus. We get to sit with him on his throne. Now, here it says, if we do his commandments, we get into the gates of the city. And then he says, without the city are all the, the sorcerers, whoremongers, adulterers, murderers, and those that make a lie. So... I don't know what your theology is, but it seems like there's people that are far from Jesus, like the prodigal son, right? He was far from the father. And then there's people that get to sit on his throne with him. Like, for instance, Revelation 3, 21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. Paul talks about we shall judge the angels. I'm telling you, there's something to this, right? And I'm going to tell you something else that I'm learning. I I want to get closer to Jesus. You know, I started out by thanking the Lord for a woodpecker, and then I praised. And then I realized, get in those gates to sit on the throne with Jesus. There's a process. And... 
I don't know where you are on your theology, but I want to explore this with you because there are some things I've learned, and I just want to say, hey, look at this. Okay, look, look at this with me. Let's talk about it. And one of the things that, I, that I've learned is from observation, these signs shall follow them that believe. We know this is in Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This has always struck me. I'm like, well, this is going to find, we're going to be able to find people that believe in Jesus because they're going to have these signs. They're going to be able to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They'll have signs following. Now, here's another observation. Okay, I've noticed that people that practice sanctification, you might want to call it holiness. You know, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. They quote scriptures like that. They take them seriously. They cast down the idols in their life like football or television. And people that do extended fasting. And you know, why would you do an extended fast? Because you believe God. <laughs> you believe God. I mean, that's what you love God. Why would you do an extended fast? I mean, there's some people that might do it for weight loss, I guess. But if you're doing it for Jesus, and if you're sanctifying yourself for Jesus, I've noticed people that do this, they have results. They have the signs following that Jesus talks about in Mark chapter 16. I believe that to be true. I don't know what you think, but I've been seeing this. And I notice that there are so many people, there are so many ministries that are walking without power, that are walking without these signs following. I have to go, you know, I don't want that. <laughs> I want I want to get in the throne with Jesus. I want to to be sanctified. I want to overcome. I want to I want to get closer to Jesus. I don't want to be without the gates in the New Jerusalem. I want to be inside the gates of the New Jerusalem. Another thing that I've noticed is the people that practice and take sanctification and holiness seriously and extended fasting seriously, they annoy the dickens out of the people that say, you don't need to do all that. Okay, and the people that say, you don't need to do all that, I don't see signs following. I mean, just let's just back up and say, okay, well, how many people that are just blatant party animal sinners, carnal Christians, have miracles happening in their ministry? Think about it. Now, if I'm wrong, just send me a link with somebody that is a carnal Christian that lays hands on the sick and they recover. I'm, I'm willing to look at it. Um, I just don't see it happening. And I know we don't walk by experience. We walk by the Word of God. But the Word of God should shape our experience. Right? If we live by the Word... The fruit of the word should be a part of our life. Here's another aspect of this. You know, for instance, I said, the people that practice sanctification and holiness in extended periods of fasting annoy the people that don't. And here's the problem I see with that. We all have this mentality that I need to thrust my theology on everybody else. It's just human nature, I guess. I'm not sure why we do it. But I want to explore that for a minute with you as well. You know, like for instance, there are certain ministries who think that if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Well, Paul in the Bible says, do all speak in tongues? Do we all speak in tongues? Basically implying that we don't all speak in tongues. He says there's various gifts. There's also various offices you know, you've got apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He's given some, 
you know, and then there's different levels of maturity and different levels of maturity and different levels of accountability. For instance, there are some that are drinking milk. You know, if you're in the milk stage of your relationship, then why would you be accountable for meat stage type stuff? It's kind of like making a kindergartner, uh, you know, you have to stop at the stop sign when he's not even old enough to drive the car. You see, we're at different levels and different accountabilities. So let's say that I'm personally convicted about something. Let's say that the Lord is convicting Conrad about holiness, sanctification, repentance. Me, right? Why would I thrust what God's dealing with me on on someone else? It's almost like a desire. Let's, say, let's, let's look at it from a different perspective. Let's say I have a, a heart for the lost people in Japan, you know, like Stephen Barrett, his whole life. He heard from the Lord, go to Japan, right? And he went. Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire, Japan. Now, he went. Does that mean everybody's got to go to Japan? That's his, that's his call, right? Uh, Gary Nesbitt, which is now doing Facebook Live, he talks a lot about several things. And I, I, I listen to this man because there's results in his ministry. There are signs that are following him. People call him up to get prayer. Right? And you know, when, when you see somebody where they call you up to get prayer, they do that because there's results in his ministry. If people are not getting healed, you're not going to get a phone call to pray for people. Right? If they don't see fruit in your ministry, you're not going to get those phone calls. But there's people that know the real deal deep down. And Gary teaches some things that most people don't like to hear. And he he backs it up with the Bible. He says, this is why I believe what I believe. People's screws melted in their shoulder, deaf ears opening. I've seen lame people walk while he prayed for them, right? And he dealt with forgiveness and repentance. Now, when you start talking about that stuff, People say, oh, no, all I have to do is, is confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe it in my heart, and I'm saved. Well, is that as far as you want to go? I mean, you could be without the New, new Jerusalem. You could be on the outside of the gates. Don't you want to sit in the throne? Are you with me? How far? What do you want to do? What do you want to do for eternity? Now, also, I'm, I'm not really, I guess I'm looking at this from, from that perspective as well. I want to sit in Jesus' lap. I want to sit in the throne. You know, I want to get as close to Jesus as possible. Let's put it that way. Lucifer, he wanted to be exalted above. He wanted to be like God. He wanted to be like God, but not with God. Amen. There's a difference. He wanted to be exalted above the people. He wanted to receive worship. He wanted to be like the Most High. I want to be with the Most High. Now, I want to, to talk about a passage that I've talked about a few times over the course of my podcasting history, and this is something that Gary's really never shared with me. He shared it from other passages, the, the concept behind it, but this is something that has really hit me, and I, I talk about it a lot. I wouldn't call it necessarily the primary thrust of my ministry, but it's something that we end up doing a lot, and it has to do with sanctification and being meat for the master's use. And let me, let me just ask you, don't you want signs to follow you? You know, I'm going to tell you, when you crucify the idols, when you get rid of the TV, I mean, when you get rid of stuff and you go out and you pray for people and God gives you a word of knowledge that changes somebody's life, you see their face change, that's better than watching the Dallas Cowboys win the Super Bowl. It's way better. And here's the passage. It's in 2 Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.19. Let's start there. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Then he's going to talk about the vessels. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth. 
What do you want to be, gold and silver or wood and earth? And to some honor and to some dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Now notice here, it says purge himself. And I, I'm going to tell you something. I understand that purging yourself is, is not just you snap your fingers. Okay? Sometimes it takes... The, think about casting the beam out of your eye. You know, it took a long time to get that beam in your eye. And sometimes we have to do what's called walking out our deliverance. I understand. And a lot of people look at this and they just go, you know, Conrad, I can't do this. Yeah, you're right. You can. not But with Christ, all things are possible. So I want to encourage you that, hey, you know what? Maybe you need to do some fasting and praying. This kind comes not out, but by fasting and prayer, maybe if you're serious, you'll fast and pray. Right? And I'm not yelling at you. I'm in the war with you because I understand the struggle, brother. I understand it. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified. There's that word sanctified. And here it is. And meet for the master's use. God can use you. Don't you want to be used of the Lord and prepared unto every good work? Right? And then it says, flee also youthful lusts. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Now, are we calling on Jesus out of a pure heart? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing they do gender strife, and the servant of the Lord must not strive. Are you striving in your life? That's something to, to look at. Is there strife? Chill out. Stephen said something on Boxer today. He goes, you know, just imagine this. Do you want to see some miracles? Come and follow me. You know, when Jesus says, follow me, they probably saw all the awesome stuff he was doing. And they left everything. They dropped their nets, and they followed the Lord. It wasn't some big grandiose thing. There were signs following Jesus. They dropped everything. And it's kind of like, hey, you want to do this? Follow me. Can you imagine that? And the strife is gone. There's something about following Jesus and actually casting your cares upon him that the strife just kind of falls off. But we need to be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by a man as well. So let's say that we're practicing sanctification and holiness and And uh, I'm going to tell you what, you cannot do this by gritting your teeth. Everybody tries to make it sound that way. But you need Jesus because God grants you the repentance. Do you understand? You can't even repent without the Lord. You got to seek him diligently. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. We must know that he is and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Cleanse, Cleanse your hands. Purify your hearts. Amen. But we have to diligently seek God before our hearts and our hands can be pure. You can't, it, you see what I'm saying? It's like you can't clean yourself up and get to God. Just put one step in front of the other, rehearse in your mouth, your confession. Just you know, I'm thinking of the prodigal son. And he'll meet you, man. He'll come out and meet you halfway. And he'll put the robe on you, the ring, and bam, you're closer to him. Just start getting closer every day. So that's it. Basically, I want to encourage you, and I want, I want you to just explore. Just think about the ministries that you know. Are there signs following them that believe? And you shall know them by their fruits, right? If those signs are following them, what, what are they talking about, right? And yes, I'm aware of lying signs and wonders. I'm aware of it. I'm aware of the fact that the Egyptians could do some of the miracles. 
They couldn't do them all. We have to have a spirit of discernment. But I think you're on the, I think you'll catch in what I'm trying to say here. You know, how, how about you? What's God telling you? Get closer to him? Or do you want to be without the gates? Amen? Think about it. God bless you. If this has touched you, please share this with your friends and family on social media. Maybe leave a comment or send me an email for a prayer request. Conrad at ConradRocks.net. Conrad at ConradRocks.net. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at ConradRocks.net.